we're going to head on into our sister circle talk or segment right now um, I think this is gonna be a very interesting conversation um, let me give you some background about this how we even got this person who I'm going to introduce in a second to be here now I know me sleep at night time uh -oh. <laughs> I don't sleep but you know I'm up doing schoolwork honestly but I was scrolling through Instagram I have no idea how I came up on the, the, the page End Rape Culture JE I was literally just scrolling and I found it and I saw that um, this organization was partnering with another to do like a film screening and then I saw that it was on UWE campus for me I said wait they put my lift on UWE I mean I'm going to do this I'm going to actually support these people I think that the ticket was only $38 and I said all right I'm just get here let me just do this I think it's for a good cause and I decided to reach out to our guest and ask her do you want to be on the show to talk about this and she said yeah I think she's gonna say no I thought you were gonna say no okay but you're here and I'm really really appreciative of that um I'm going to introduce my guest right now of course her name is Shanique Palmer uh, she's the founder of End Rape Culture JA, a local anti-sexual violence non-governmental organization that utilizes public education, technology, and strategic collaboration to raise awareness and end sexual violence in the country. It carries out targeted behavior change programs covering the topics of consent, sexual violence, safety, and prevention at the primary, secondary, sec secondary, my God, and tertiary education level, as well as within the workplace. That's right. Um, in addition to her advocacy work, Palmer is also the head of public relations firm Bespoke Communications, operating in Kingston and also South Florida people, specializing in digital marketing, crisis communications, as, and sustainability marketing. She holds a bachelor's degree, yes, I'm getting loud for this part, in media and communications and a minor in Spanish from the University of the West Indies and continues her relationships with the Karmak Institution. Oh, no, no, a Karmak Mede, no. Yeah, a Karmak Mede. <laughs> By offering the annual bespoke Karmak grant program, which awards an exemplary student pursuing an undergraduate degree in communications and marketing. Um, by paying for their semester one tuition fees and offering personal and career mentorship. This is amazing. Janique, welcome. Welcome to Woman Up. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Hear the voice. No matter you for come you. the show. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just read out everything. Uh, most, look here, mama tell you. Some light things, don't it? Normally, <laughs> normally them say, oh, them teacher, no, don't read out the whole bio. But you see, when girl good, girl just good. And I have to read out the bio because you've been doing amazing work. And you never finish it. I mean, never, me never did done it. Never finish it neither. Me never, me never read. Me I read the balance note. Me you ready? <laughs> She also holds certificates in sustainable business strategy. People from Harvard Business School and advanced <laughs> crisis communications from the PR Society of America. She's also currently enrolled in the digital marketing program at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. When Ooh, girl good, girl here. just good. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. I, I love everything that you've accomplished so far. And just for me, and I know for the ladies who are listening, they're inspired. I'm inspired. Oh, thank you. Honestly. Thank you. I'm happy to inspire. That's why we're all here, right? <laughs> love that. That's why we're all here, um, delivering our purpose. Definitely. How are you feeling, though? Like, where's your headspace at? Are you feeling good? What's going on? I'm feeling very good. I'm ready to talk about everything having to do with that topic that people don't necessarily like to talk yeah, about and yeah. maybe it's time to start having conversations because it concerns an issue that does affect very many persons men mm -hmm. women children but statistically women are the most affected right. and we need to start having conversations about it we need to not be keeping it behind closed doors sitting down barring about it and not telling anybody mm -hmm. we need to start you know having persons you know own up to what they've done and to stamp it out I love that. Now, when I was doing my little research, um, when I randomly lit, I randomly came up on your page, End Rape Culture Jamaica. And I think it stood out to me because we had a discussion uh, surrounding this topic, um, I think last week or the week before. And I was like, yeah, this is timely. Now, before we get into what the organization is all about, what exactly is rape culture? 
and what do you think is the cause of this evidence <laughs> the evident rape culture that is actually seen in jamaica so rape culture really has to do with the normative behaviors or any environment really that allows for sexual violence to thrive so it's any ecosystem that allows for sexual harassment mm -hmm. sexual assault or any kind of sexual abuse to be prevalent so i'm going to give you some examples now so for example in jamaica and by no means is this restricted to jamaica we see misogyny all mm -hmm. the time or even just the simply put the objectification of women and women are just these instruments of pleasure when a person looks at a woman and doesn't see a person mm -hmm. just a per not even a person with real goals aspirations doing things living their, their lives they're simply seeing not a human being just some sexy female who they're supposed to have sex with yeah and their behaviors are going to reflect that and then when you can hear it perpetuated in song lyrics um, there was a dance song lyric very many years ago by a very popular artist. I won't name the person, mm -hmm. but it was an artist and um, he's still current today, actually. And they actually had a line that said, you know, if a girl are going through school, she just give her a couple drinks and, and, and um, stagger that and dagger that. Do you hear what he just yeah. said? He's literally yeah. describing to you what constitutes a drug facilitated sexual assault. And this was a song lyric and no one saw anything wrong with it. So these kinds of things perpetuate rape culture. I'll give you even another example again. When a woman claims that she has been sexually assaulted or raped, the first thing people do is they immediately either doubt it or just flat out assume that the girl or the woman is lying. People rarely ever approach other crimes this way. Mm -hmm. If I were to tell you that I just got robbed on the way over here, you wouldn't be like, boy, I wonder if I lie, she had to tell you. Yeah. They'd be like, oh my God, how did this happen? When did this happen? You know, let's go report this. I'm so concerned. How can I help you? They don't approach other crimes the same way and that really does a disservice to the victim and it's unfortunate because the worldwide statistic is actually that only 2%, just 2% of reported cases of rape are false, just 2%. Mm -hmm. And those 2% usually have to do with women who normally have a history of lying or like mental in illness. Mm -hmm. So it is actually very rare, statistically, these are facts that you can research, that a woman is lying. So, you know when when a person will also tell a person this fine they believe you mm -hmm. but then they start to the victim blame mm -hmm. why you wear that why you go around there so that does not have anything that to do with it. anything you should that always lay blame at the feet of the accuser and then you take the next step now you go report it now mm -hmm. it's not always smooth sailing when mm -hmm. you go and report to that police station sometimes they tend to be they can be insensitive or just not know how to collect data proper, properly to get you all the evidence that you need and get your statement right to actively pursue this case, case that could, should hopefully result in a conviction. And then we can take it a step further again mm -hmm. too. Let's talk about the judicial system. So we go past the police now and you know, we're going to justice system, we're in court now. And for some reason or another, the rapist isn't convicted and they walk away. They're back on the road to commit this heinous assault again. That really again is a dis disservice to the victim. and. You want to hear the statistics? Yeah. The statistics for this one now. Definitely. This is another worldwide one that you can research. Mm -hmm. The conviction rate of a rapist. Can anyone in here tell me what you think that might be? What percentage is it? I, I'm not. I'm not. Even How gonna many try. rapists just... who make it through court, make it through trial, actually end up in prison? I'm afraid. Like I'm actually afraid to hear the statistics. Three percent. Three Just three percent. So what that means is that ninety per ninety seven percent wow. of rapists that's are going crazy. to walk, and some of them know this. So that's why some of them are so confident because if you go through all of that and you finally get to court after she go through all of that trauma, and remember she's suffering mentally as well. Mm -hmm. When it finally gets there and he walks, so some of them know that they're going to. He knows that when he rapes someone, he has a 97% chance of getting away. Whoa. So that is rape culture. When all these things play around in society, that's rape culture for you. It's the ecosystem that keeps it going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I've, I've heard about these, the, the statistics that you've given, but um, for you, in, in terms of you starting your um, organization, have you had any personal experiences um, with sexual harassment, any at all? Oh goodness, where do I start? Wow. Every woman has a sexual harassment experience. I know you have, I know That's she has. That's actually very true. You probably even had one too. <laughs> <laughs> it's so common, it's part of your everyday life. Let me tell you, this is almost on the daily for me. Mm -hmm. I live on a main road, so it starts at my gate. When wow. I'm backing out my car, 
you know, you see them leaning out their head out the window. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the movie that we're going to talk about a little later, Nice Lady, that's why it was actually named that. That's the number one cat call in Jamaica. That is so... I didn't nice see lady. That's so true. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's why so we actually, they actually named the movie that. So, yeah, every woman pretty much deals with it. It's something that's just par for the course with us. It's literally part of being a woman, unfortunately. Mm. And has would you say that your experience um, has uh, fueled your passion for starting um, in rape culture, J.A.? Absolutely, and not just my own experience, the experience of others, my friends. Mm -hmm. I can tell you where, you know, N Rape Culture JA started out. It started with a simple hashtag, N Rape Culture JA. So that's actually why the name looks like that is all joined up in words, right, really, right. you know, harkening back to the fact that it was a hashtag, hashtag. N Rape Culture JA. So this actually started in early 2021. It was upon the heels of Kenise Jackson's murder and when it was widely believed that she was raped before she was murdered you remember that case yeah, man, I definitely. Year. you know every woman really remembers that case because there was public outcry social media was on fire yeah. with it and it was just a really heavy time for women i wasn't even in, living in jamaica at the time so and even for me so many miles away just seeing all of that happening and playing out on twitter and knowing what it feels like to have to go through these kind of things as a woman it really hurt i was actually depressed for a whole week like we can't be living like this as women come on she just wanted a right to go to work yeah a right to go to work i mean so later investigations should reveal that she wasn't actually raped mm -hmm. that's what it said however we thought that at the time so that's when the topic you know came up again so i just decided then and there that i was going to commit to start posting um on my personal page not even on my grader on my story post just with the hashtag and rape culture ja just really just educating my followers as little as they may be my personal followers about um about rape culture yeah. about sexual violence and awareness so that's where it all started and you would not believe the feedback that i actually got so i'm just posting this thinking i'm just doing my own little thing here yeah. maybe nobody's paying attention or them probably asking, why shouldn't i post them so yeah so that's when the DM started coming. Mm. Women would start reaching out to me, giving me feedback and telling me stories of their own rape. Wow. Whoa. And these were my friends who I've known for very many years who never ever said anything to me. These were acquaintances who I just say hi and bye to. And these were absolute strangers who just heard about what I was posting. I would just be my DMs and my DMs are a very scary place some days mm. but they're just they're just venting and telling me their rape stories and they're telling me I've never told my husband this I've never oh. told my parents this I've never told my friends you are literally the only person I know who, who, who I've told and I just have always wanted to for years have someone to talk about it to wow. and I'm like what am I gonna do with all this information I have I have to do something have to do something so this is the something that we're that doing, doing. So rape culture J. and i absolutely love that um you didn't just have this story stay in the dm in a sense but no. you 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 used whatever it is that they came to you about these young ladies came to you about and you turned it into something that can have an, an even greater impact on other young course, ladies who are afraid man. to come to your dm of course, you understand? because i mean it's it's very it's very disheartening and depressing because i'm yeah. going to give you an example of one of the stories in my dm so it's i just i'd love to not walk away from this conversation without sharing the type of you know messages that i get because yeah. they really can just you know make your day just not the rest of your day not awesome so i have this is a friend that we're not super close but i know her well enough yeah we'll call her shelly mm -hmm. so shelly reached out to me and she's saying boy shan you know the first time i was raped xyz then she said the second time she was raped xyz then she said the third time she was raped X and i'm thinking somebody can get raped three times because in in my mind the experience if you are you know unfortunate enough to have it yeah it's just this one thing that happened to you that one time and like you get to put it behind you and no like you could get raped tomorrow it, wow. it doesn't just stop yes. there so it's a real problem so she's tell she's always upbeat always perky she's happily married she lives in europe with her husband has a beautiful family has mm -hmm. her two sons and life looks perfect for her mm -hmm. her husband takes care of her and she's saying, boy, Shan, I've just been depressed and suicidal for so many years. And I'm just trying to hold on so bad. 
and I'm just at least trying to wait until my son's turned 18 before I kill myself. When someone sends this, and like I said, this is my friend who I know, yeah. I never knew that she even had these feelings. So when women are out there with this heaviness on them who are really suffering, and no one's really doing anything about it, the fact is that people even afraid to say the word rape, them can't say, they said she was taken advantage of, she was this, that. no, she get raped. And you've seen that a lot in the media. <laughs> when you read these newspaper yes. headlines, yes, because you it's uncomfortable. But if the, the word, word makes you so uncomfortable, how you think that and how the these actual, people, of course, yeah. something needs to be done about it. Whoa, 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 okay. Yeah, that was, that was a little heavy. That was, that was really heavy. But, um you've taken you've taken these stories out of the dms you have created end rape culture ja with this that's your non-profit organization no you have partnered with is it watuka yes it's okay watuka great films. i'm trying to pronounce that for the longest while so watuka yes. films so you you partner with watuka films for the inaugural staging of its upcoming and this is is it cine cine six. cine six so it's a play mm. on the oops on the word cinema and ah. six because they're cocktails that are going to be okay, served there great, great. so you, it's cocktail inclusive so you sip and we're going to have a good night you know educating ourselves and having conversations and having just fun a good time so it's a it's a film festival and yes. as you said earlier um it will be featuring its latest creative work in the horror genre which yes, is very interesting titled nice lady which right. you said was really created that title was there because of the normal mm -hmm. you only going on the road here nice lady nice lady oh gosh they get a little time now <laughs> you know something so these these are gonna this is going to be shown here at you you're gonna tell me a little bit about that of course um mm -hmm. alongside three other locally produced short films that yes. also aim to educate the public on rape culture you know misogyny sexual harassment and sexual violence tell me a little bit about the partnership how it happened why is it important to you okay so the director and the owner of watuka films is kyle ito mm -hmm. he's actually a friend of mine he from you days actually so mm -hmm. i've known him from when my time here at university and he was always interested in film so he would actually on instagram see my posts on my personal page as well as on the page i created for n rape culture ja right and he reached out to me so he sent me the film i watched it and i was triggered i was absolutely triggered because what the film depicts is exactly what I and many other women feel most days when I leave my home. So when women, and most women actually feel this way and that there could literally be danger at every single turn. So, and not, not happening other than she just going home in a half a tree, you know? Mm -hmm. But you know, when people calling after you, saying nice lady, this and that, everybody I grab off for you. And it's, when you get home, you're just like, oh my God, thank God I made it home. Yeah, thank yeah. God nothing more than that did happen. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. So I thought it was important to spread awareness because the other gender doesn't necessarily know what that feels like because they don't, nobody knows, say, nice lady to them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what it feels like. So, you know, especially for, and not just women just walking around, especially for survivors. Yeah. Can you imagine just being raped, for example, last week and this is the treatment that you're getting day to day on top of it too. You're already going through your own thing in your head and people still not grab after you. Yeah. Mm, so you know it's really to educate others what it really feels like and um it's some the thing is there are a lot of men who don't necessarily know that what they're doing is wrong because understandably so no one's ever said it to them yeah so they view it as flirting but when it's actually is really and truly just harassment <laughs> so um it's just really just to educate them to be more aware of what they're doing and um just a larger issue of sexual violence and what are you I, I figure probably education for persons are going to be one of the things you want to see come out of it but other than that what what else do you really want to see come out of people sitting down and really watching and med I mean, not about just watch it for watch it's sake but really meds the messaging that is coming out of this this film and the other films that will be sh showcasing um what what's the end goal what you want people to feel well, that's the thing i spoke specifically to nice lady mm -hmm. but the three other films there deal with the wider women's issues right. including including you know the issue of sexual violence as well and i will actually say this this is something that i say all the time 
I just want persons to be more aware and mm -hmm. cognizant of their behaviors and how they themselves contribute to rape culture, whether it's not believing a person, whether it's not, uh, not encouraging a person to report it or seek mental help after they've been, they've experienced sexual violence, whether it's um, basically just disassociating from the rapist because there are persons who will know and still associate with that person. So they're not, they're not really understanding that they've done something wrong. And then in addition to that too, um, I will actually say, I, I have this saying, and as harsh as it might actually mm -hmm. sound, is that people don't really care about women being raped. They don't. The only two instances where they normally do is where if, if the woman was underage at the time, so that's a girl actually, mm -hmm. if she was underage at the time, or if she was murdered shortly after it, was ha mm -hmm. after it happened. That's the only time that there's public outrage. outrage it if it's just a, a quote unquote normal rape, nobody cares. She'll get over it. It's just a little sex. And it shouldn't be that way because it as much as it is a physical crime it is far more a psychological crime yeah that's where the issues continue to play out for years in their heads so they need to be educated because there are the, yes you have the monsters yes you have the psychopaths you have the predators who just engage in this act of sexual violence but outside of that there are genuinely men out there who just don't actually know that they're rapists because they were never taught the concept of consent. Yeah. In sex ed class, you, they teach you how to put on a condom. They show you a barrage of photos of diseased genitalia. Mm -hmm. But did they teach you consent? Most times they actually don't. I know I wasn't. Yeah, I wonder which sex ed talk, um, class they talk about because I never have any. Exactly. Some some persons don't even have yeah. sex ed. Their parents don't even talk to them about it. So how did they know how to quote unquote? look girl from mm -hmm. the same dance hall lyrics that objectifying the women so some of them genuinely don't know they don't know i i this is a conversation we even we had weeks ago we had just earlier actually with one of our other guests so it's interesting that it's coming back up here but um we know that we're definitely strapped for time but i want to know how can people purchase tickets and support the films that will be showcased i know it is tomorrow you know tell me a little give me a little information about that right so it's tomorrow on the youth campus here as you said at the senior Com common room it's at 7 30 and tickets can be purchased they're five thousand dollars they can be purchased at watukafilms.com if you whatsapp six four six three eight nine four six six zero they can arrange to get tickets to you and you can also purchase tickets at the gate of the event all right Thank you so much, Shanif, you know, just for coming and for sharing. Um, sorry, it's it's really heavy. And I'm uh, there, are, there are lots of things that, that's going through my head now. We literally, we had a conversation surrounding safety in Jamaica, and it is actually crazy. You get me? But I'm, I'm glad you created your organization um, just for the education, for the support for these ladies, but to also educate other people. You understand me? I definitely, I feel like there's going to be some kind of partnership going on sometime in the future, too. whenever. I feel, I feel it. it for sure. And I'm, I'm, numbers. <laughs> I'm definitely all for that. I want to really thank you. Come on, you just touched down today in a Jamaica. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm back today. <laughs> yeah, man, so I appreciate you. You're not just taking the time out to come here. I know you have a lot of work to do for, for even tomorrow for the film yes, for sure. festival. So thank you so much. That's the voice of Shanique Palmer. She is the founder of End Rape Culture, JA. You're listening to Woman Up, and we've actually come to the end of our show we went over a little bit you understand me about keisha keisha so we could have set a little time <laughs> so i appreciate her um thank you so much for listening see you next week wednesday yeah at 8 p.m um right here on new stock 93 fm have a good evening <laughs> imagine by john lennon what is